Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Birkins, Kelly's, Hermes, hi. Hermes bags, better investments than gold nowadays? What is happening? Oh, let's talk about this. First, subscribe to my channel here on the tubes. Push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today. You can also join me on Patreon. Super Deco all spelled together on Patreon for extra perks. Thank you to all my members and patrons who have already pledged. We also have Discord now. Oh, super exciting. A lot of photos shared there as well. And Intel. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream every Saturday and you're all invited to partake in the live chats. Cue in the chats. Hello, everybody. Welcome, darlings. Listen, you guys, we'll go, we'll go. <laughs> We're on a touch base. And this is a serious topic, really, because we talk about Hermes a lot. And when we talk about Hermes, we have the Hermes crop. And it's always Birkins and Kellys and Birkins and Kellys. This poor brand is is becoming really known only for Birkins and Kellys. And it's becoming known for how hard it is to get a Birkin and Kelly. And it's becoming known for how expensive it is to resell them. Like, you can earn so much money on the... Allegedly, everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only. Just my opinion. Not rooted in truth or reality or facts. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. But we only talk about that. This brand must be more than just Birkins and Kelly's. Well, there's now this sort of list going around of the top seven Hermes bags that are worth more than gold. Now, I cannot... I'm not allowed to suggest you any investments or anything like that because I'm not one of those people. I didn't study that. And I, you know what I always tell you. I always tell you, buy a bag because you want to wear a bag because it makes you happy. You know, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the first person, guilty as charged, who's going to tell you I'm the crazy one who's going to spend way more than, than it's worth if I love a bag. It's just something. I'm addicted to it. You, what can I tell you? If, 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 if there's a, a Chanel uh, in particular, if there's a Chanel bag that makes my heart flutter by hook or by crook, I will find a way to buy that bag. And that's that's the way I, I is. But some people, they want their Hermes bags. Now, let's get to the list of the seven top Hermes bags that some newspapers are reporting are worth more than gold in terms of investments. Now, we cannot talk about that because we're not investors, but interesting to see the history of these bags. And this is why I find this topic so interesting because we're gonna to touch base on more than just the Birkin and the Kelly. But are we gonna be more in love with Hermes after we've touched base on more than these two? Eh, let's see. I'm ready to be surprised, are you? Bag number one. Before I do the bag number one, this video is sponsored by Art Lovers Unite. Get your tickets to my movie world premiere at the Melbourne Documentary Festival. The movie features yours truly and the one and only Dame Vivian Westwood. Art Lovers Unite is going to premiere on the 29th of July at the Melbourne Documentary Film Festival. Get your tickets and they're selling out real fast. Get your tickets now at www artloversunite.com then you push screenings and then you get your tickets i might just be there at the premiere to talk to you and interact and we can actually get to meet each other for the for the first time real time not just like this virtually so get your tickets now before they're all gone because it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to get to the world premiere of art lovers unite get your tickets at www.artloversunite.com the first bag, let's cue in the bag, is the Birkin. Of course it's the Birkin. Of course it's the Birkin. I mean, <laughs> what else could it be but a Birkin? A bada bing, bada bang. And, um, I, I mean, do I love a Birkin? If, if somebody gifted me a Birkin, I would take it. Oh, hell yeah, I would take it. I mean, I, I, you know, for me, the two Birkins that represent something symbol symbolically are not really, you know, two movies. Uh, Blue Jasmine or what's her name? Jasmine Jasmine with uh, Kate Blanchett, the Woody Allen movie. Her character has that tan. 
Birkin 35. The other one, the Royal Tenenbaums, Gwyneth Paltrow, with her Birkin 35. Also kind of nude tan color. Like, to me, that's a... They're used, slightly beat up. They got scratches. I like when a Birkin is lived or has lived and when it has that used patina. Um, now, you know, the It Girl... So, it, this is so sad because, well, what they say, a coveted luxury handbag, Birkin, was the result of a chance encounter between Jean-Louis Dumas and singer-actress Jane Birkin. The two were together on a Paris to London flight, and it was their conversation that led Dumas to design a bag because, like, she had a baby. She was like, I don't have a bag that's going to carry all my essentials plus baby bottles. And he's like, oh, Oh, mon Dieu. Oh, let me design a bag for you, mademoiselle. You are a famous singer, actress. What? Oh, no problem. I'm going to design a bag for you. Allegedly, they made her pay. <laughs> yeah, allegedly. So they designed the bag for her and they made her pay for that. Didn't give it to her for free. Uh, this is just alleged. Uh, of course, everything I see in this video is just al alleged, right? So interesting how it's come. it has come to be and how... Many articles, and in this case, PrestigeOnline.com is reporting, and I love how they kind of kill it for me even more, because when they talk about the Birkin, they say the coveted bag is a favorite of celebrities like Victoria Beckham, and I'm already like, girl, that doesn't make me want the bag. Kim Kardashian, and I'm like, now I want it even less. Kris Jenner, and now I don't want it. <laughs> Kylie Jenner. Jennifer Lopez and Drake. And I'm like, wow. Thank you. Thank you, article. Thank you, Prestige Online. Uh, or Prestige... Um PrestigeOnline.com Because after you've listed the celebrities, like, this is like the A-list. Like, you're like saying like, hey, if they have it, you gotta have it. I'm like, no, if they have it, that means I don't want it. <laughs> but anyway, so such an overpriced... So, Debbie says, so it's an overpriced diaper bag. <laughs> it's more than an overpriced diaper bag because we're going to get to the ancestor of the Birkin in just a second. So, and of course, then they just say, you know, it, it's, it's hard to get them, but obviously the secondhand market is flooded with them. So they're not that rare. It's just about having the right connections to get them. But of course they cost you more to buy them in the secondhand market because buying them in the Hermes boutiques, you might have to play that weird game of building up a purchase history before you're offered to buy a Birkin and then you might not be offered to buy a Birkin in the color you want because the color you might want might not be readily available. So you might want to resort to the secondhand market where you can just pick out the color you want, but that's going to cost you a pretty penny uh, more than the actual retail price. So that's a bit of a problem. But that's, that's everybody. And of course, the Birkin became famous even more so through Sex in the City with Samantha Jones, we all know that episode when Samantha Jones wanted the Birkin and then, you know, they didn't want to give it to her. So they, they said, this is not just a bag. This is a Birkin. And then she's like, Lucy Lou, you know, I'm her PR. You've got to get it for her. And then she lied. And then she kept it for herself. Lucy Lou found out, took the bag and left. Historical moment. Uh, funny to see Sarah Jessica Parker a few months ago give an interview during And Just Like That or right after And Just Like That uh, with Vogue. And they were uh, showing her photos from her past. And she was talking about her, what she was wearing. And there was this one photo from Sex and the City where she had a Birkin in her hand. And she admitted to Vogue. It's on YouTube. You can see it. She said, oh, this Birkin was fake. My jaw dropped. I was like, first of all, that tells you all you need to know. Sex and the City. She's like, yeah. <laughs> Patricia Field had this contact and said, I could get you whatever you want. Do you want one of them? They look real. And apparently they used one of the fake ones for an episode of Sex and the City. I don't know what Hermes thinks about this. And can Hermes sue them for having used a fake Birkin and passing it as a real one in an episode of Sex and the City? It wasn't the Samantha Jones hunting a Birkin episode. It was another episode, just a random moment where... Uh, Carrie had, a, I think it was a green or a blue Birkin that she had there. And in that YouTube video, she says literally like, oh yeah, that one, <laughs> yeah, that wasn't real. I was shook to the core. 
to the core, the shade. It was a blue Birkin, says Frozen Luxury. All right, let's go to the second bag. Obviously, you guessed it. It's a Kelly. Here's a, a weird depiction of a Kelly. Usually, a Kelly comes in one color. This is, <laughs> this is kind of a special artistic depiction of a Kelly. But uh, the Kelly, made famous by Grace Kelly, trying to hide her pregnant belly uh, back in the day. And kind of the Kelly became a symbol of luxury, darling. Eleganza, darling. So, one of the most iconic handbags created by Robert Dumas is the Hermes Kelly. The trapezoid-shaped handbag for women features two triangular gussets, two side straps, a handle, and a cutout flap. Right. It is said that in the 50s, Grace Kelly was spotted carrying the bag. She became Princess of Monaco, uh, was photographed holding the bag over her stomach in an attempt to hide her baby bump. Yeah, we already said that, honey. Thank you. Um, anyway, before that incident, it was called Sac à Depeche. Depeches, Depeche. Uh, Depeche. Sac à Depeche. Sac à Depeche. It is also a prized possession that graces the wardrobes of many celebrities including Kim Kardashian, Kylie Jenner, and Jennifer Lopez. The bag even made a cameo in the famous K-drama, Crash Landing on You. Anyway, um, where Yoon Seri carries a not-so-common Kelly backpack in one of the scenes. Well, good for you. We'll go, we'll go. Kelly, what can I tell ya? The only time I started dreaming of a Kelly was when I saw Kate Moss with her busted ass Kelly, like her Kate Moss exiting a club drunk with a cigarette, I think cigarette in her mouth, Kelly in her head, the Kelly is busted with a hole on one corner. I was like, man, this is punk rock and roll. This is where it's at. A Kelly needs to be used and abused to look really, really hot and chic. And Kate Moss rocks a ravaged Kelly like nobody's business. So, I the next one is the Constance. The Constance, which you might have also guessed. It's a very popular bag. It's another one of those so-called quota bags, meaning you got to reach a shopping quota. You got to buy enough until they offer you to purchase one of them. So the Burke and the Kelly are quota bags. So is the Constance third place but still and um this is something that maybe some people don't know um that um it's a modern simple and highly functional over the shoulder bag you remember when bet midler said in beaches the song over the shoulder boulder holder oh my god i love that scene and uh, secured with a simple age clasp it was designed by Kat Catherine chalet or Catherine chalet or Chailet, Catherine Chailet, in 1967. Now, if, if some people might not know this, but while Catherine was pregnant, she designed this bag, and she called the bag Constance because that's the name of her daughter. So the designer named the bag after her daughter. Hmm. Is this bag practical? I mean... I mean, I've, I've seen more practical bags. I'm not such a big fan of that huge H in the front and how the top metal things hold the strap. There's more practical bags out there. But anyway, and so they say that this timeless piece comes in four sizes, the classic Constance 24, along with a mini, an extra mini or a micro version. And then there's a rectangular model called Elan. Now we get to the fourth. The fourth one is the Evelyn. Now the Evelyn has a different story to it. It doesn't have a mother being pregnant, designing a bag, calling the bag after its child. This one, maybe it's called after a horse, but the, but the Evelyn bag came out first in 1978. So this is a 70s baby. It was made for riders to use while tending to their horses. It has no lining. 
because it has to be breathable and it has those perforations, that bold H holes made into the bag. Those holes are made so that all the brushes for the horse, whatever dirty stuff that you worked the horse with, you put inside that satchel. Those holes are there so that the air filters through the bag. So whatever you put from after the horse inside of the bag, that it can dry quicker and doesn't turn moldy as fast. So those holes, that logo, those holes actually had a function to dry whatever you put into the bag. So they were, the holes were made to, uh, to let the air pass through. So the horse tending equipment like a comb could easily dry. The sporty bag is now considered a must-have luxury accessory. I mean, okay. <laughs> uh, there are four generations of the bag. This I did not know, you guys. Generation one lacks the exterior pocket and adjustable strap. Generation two just has the exterior pocket. Generation three features both, making it the most popular or practical one. And the last one is the Cellier Evelyn bag, which has been modified and uh, should not have the holes, allegedly. It does not consist of any perforations, yeah. But it still features an imprinted diamond double, uh, a single H. So, at the moment this article was written, only Generation 3 and Cellier Evelyn are in production. But they come in four sizes, Evelyn 16, 29, 33, and Evelyn 40. Now we're going to go hard pass, says Oli. Oli says, hard pass unless I get a horse. <laughs> oh my God, loving, living for the shade, living for the shade. Listen, moving on to the next one. This is interesting because this next one, I'm not going to know how to pronounce it. It's so difficult to pronounce. But we're going back in time and it is the ancestor of the Birkin. Let me show you. We'll go, we'll go. Miss Thing on the runway is carrying that ginormously huge Birkin, which kind of stems from the Haute à Courroie. <laughs> the H-A-C bag. Haute à Courroie. I don't know how to pronounce this. Sorry, you French people. I'm going to spell it for you. C-O-U-R-R-O-I-E-S. Like, what the hell is this? Yes, it's the H-A-C, Maria. And the H-A-C is the abbreviation for OT, for the H. A is for the A. And the C is for Kuroye. <laughs> now, this little uh, nifty little ginormous bag uh, is the first bag ever produced by the brand, allegedly. I thought there were other bags made before this one, but they're saying this was the first uh, bag. It's a suitcase. You could put a small town in there, says uh, is Cyborg, Cyborg Da. Actually, it's not made to be just a regular bag that Miss Thing is strutting on the runway. It was born as the bag for saddles and horse riding boots. It's a big bag so that you can put your horse saddle in it. So, Ot a oh God, whatever, is the first bag ever produced by the brand, allegedly, right? And it won't be wrong to say that it is also one of the most stylish Hermes bags made to carry and protect saddles and riding boots. The height and width of this bag are bigger than usual. Well, yeah, if you're going to put a saddle in it. It made <clears throat> the life of riders easy as it was before the era of the automobile boom. Apart from being practical, the stunning piece also features a touch of sauve. The bag that is held in place with straps had no name initially, so it simply became otako whatever, which when translated into English means tall, which means ot is tall or Haute, haute, tall, and straps, courroyer, whatever. So it means tall and straps. Wow, how original, Hermes, naming their bag, tall with straps. <laughs> it 
sounds like any tall queen in some SM uh, bar in the middle of the night. Tall with straps, honey. Oh, honey, we, oh, we. Tall with straps. Anyway, we digress. Um, <clears throat> it comes in two sizes. Size 40 is somewhere between a handbag and a travel bag, but size 50 is the ultimate travel bag. Many celebrities, including Kim Kardashian, Victoria Beckham, have often been, yeah, girl, this is so sad. You're, you're killing it for me. Now, the next one will go, will go. A lot of people don't know about this one. When we talk about Hermes, a lot of people don't know about this one. But let me show you the next one. The next one is the Bolide. B-O-L-I-D-E. You might think, oh, it looks like an Alma. Yeah. But it came before the Alma, allegedly. And you might think, oh, it's so boring. Well, not that boring. My dear friend, Jesse Style, by the way, go subscribe to Jesse's channel. Jesse's amazing. Jesse has this bag and she told me, because I, I, she showed me a photo of it. And she's like, Deka, what do you think? I just got this bag. I was like, why is there that little weird leather patch between the straps? Why is that naked patch there? And she said, well, in the past, this used to be the spot on that patch they would um, emboss or engrave or paint or put on your initials. It had a reason and the bolide was meant for fast traveling because listen to the story of this little bag. It's actually interesting. Bolide's history dates back to 1923. And it was created keeping the globetrotters in mind. Yeah, sports, you best believe. This bag had a zip, a zipper pull, which was brought back by Emile Hermes from America. And he had the monopoly over it. So when Emile Hermès brought the zipper from America to Europe, he allegedly got patent over it. Could you could you believe? Could you imagine? And now everybody has a zipper. Look, I have a zipper pull right here on on this little shirt. Jeremy Scott for Adidas 2015, baby. We're living for the pink. Um. Oh, which, by the way, also has a lot of inspiration. Look at all the Cellier moments. They're very inspired by Hermes, isn't it? Look at all that little horse riding gear. You know, I'm dressed for the occasion, darling. Call me Kreskin. Now, imagine that the zippers were just nowhere to be found in Europe. And like Hermes was like the first, like, honey, I got a zipper. And this was the bag that they made with a zipper. Because they thought this is great for sport activities, super easy to put all your sports gear in it. You zip it and then you can throw it in the trunk of a car, of a boat, ship, plane, what have you. And it can roll over and nothing is going to fall out of it because it's not just about button closures and little straps. And it's a zipper. It's super, super safe. So this was made for sports travel. Isn't that fascinating? All of a sudden the bag kind of has a history. And it looks so simple and boring, but then you think, oh, wait, hold on. All the other bags that look, that came after this look like this bag. And it started with the bolide. Fascinating, isn't it? Makes me respect this little bag much more. I got to say, you're ugly, but I respect you. Um, the bolide bag comes in five sizes. Bolide mini, bolide 27, bolide 31, bolide 35, and bolide 45 which is the travel size. Now, I got to be honest with y'all. This little thing in a miniature, I don't care for it. You can buy an Alma for it. But this in a size, uh, what did they say, 50 or 45? 45? Nice travel bag. You know what? I'm kind of living. To have this as your kind of carry-on little suitcase moment, little carry-on bag into a plane, because... Up to 45 centimeter, you can. You know, it is a carry-on. Kind of living. Kind of living. Although we know that usually Hermes leathers in such big sizes are super heavy. So not very practical to schlep it around. But uh, kind of living. The bolita is like, call me, Dick. Right, Winnie? Winnie. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah. Now, moving on to the next one. <clears throat> and the last one, it's it's the picotin 
Picotin. Now, of course, you see, you see there's a pattern forming here with Hermes bags and their history. Like, they're all connected to horse gear, riding horses, uh, globe trotters, uh, soccer, basketball, uh, football, sport, polo, what have you. You know, horse riding is also a sport, by the way. And this is nonetheless the picotin. Let's, let's hear about the picotin. In French, picotin, uh, some people in English call it the picotine. I think it's the picotin in French. Listen to this, you guys. We'll go, we'll go. Picotin in French refers to the amount of feed given to a horse at one time. <laughs> so, basically, this is supposed to contain the amount of food for one feeding of a horse. Elegant. So this is exactly the inspiration behind this bag. A horse feed bag. <laughs> Lovely. Anna Bay, darling. Dinner is ready. Dinner is served. This, cla <laughs> this classic bucket bag never goes out of style because of its minimalist yet functional design. Noting that functionality is one of the top priorities of Hermès when it comes to handbags, the picotin bag allows the user to fit everything in it. The lock closure adds an alluring aesthetic angle, making it the perfect go-to designer bag. So, let me tell you. I mean, girl. Oh, honey, I love my Hermes crops. I don't mind a little Hermes horse bucket bag moment either. If you know what I mean, we'll go, we'll go. But yeah, Hermes, the brand for elitist horses, to totes. I want to walk around Paris with a picotin filled with hay. Oh, Andrea. <gasps> Love it. That, the sophistication. I'm loving that visual. Honestly, I think it's fabulous. <clears throat> Blonde and Chatty, I actually like this one and love the history and it looks elegant and durable jack says the lock keeping that wide open safe and secure i know right i also thought like this makes no sense like that little lock is like whatever it's just like here i'm a lock but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna help you protect what's inside the bag people can still reach especially in paris honey they reach inside a bag you won't even notice that they did and they're gonna take everything out of that bag they're even gonna take the bag out of the bag let me guess who has it. Here goes the name list of people, LOL, says Nina. No, I think this I think this this particular bag is not so popular amongst the Kardashians. You know, no. They just want the Birkins and the Kellys and the Constances. You know, the this this is too low for them. This is not on their level. Debbie says pizza and nuggets in the picotin. Uh Sweet Thing says they are effortless. The leather is soft and squishy. Not terribly elegant, but chic. Wait, is this the toolbox bag? Is this Winnie? No, this is the, the horse feed bag. You put the food for a horse in there. This is understated. Low-key Lux vibe, says KDF. Low-key Lux vibe. It is. Well, that is something good about the bag. <laughs> Well, anyway, these were the seven that are considered by some to be better investments than gold. I cannot say that. Uh, I cannot even agree with that. Uh, but what are, what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, never give up on love and subscribe.